Is 2024 the biggest, most important election of our lifetimes? It is fully yet to be seen, but one thing that we can say for sure, it's definitely the most interesting election coming forward because, well, we kind of have an idea on what's going to happen with the Republican side of things. All things considered, it's more than likely going to be Trump unless they pull something completely weird, odd, or just outright illegal. More than likely going to be, you know, the big T-R-U-M-P from the RNC. But on the DNC side, well, it's still likely going to be Joe Biden. We're going to see a run back of 2020, which I personally, you know, out of everything considered, not because, you know, I voiced my concerns about Gavin Newsom and I'm about to about Michelle Obama right here. I just, oh my God, I just want to see Joe Biden crumble on a debate stage. It's like if this old man is just so egotistical where he can't even look around and go, I'm just, uh, I'm done, man. I can't, I, I, I just can't even, I can't do this anymore. If, if him and the people around him are just continuing to big him up to run again, you get exactly what you deserve. So if you're going to go ahead and just turn into a pillar of salt right there on stage, I want to be there to run it all down because that's going to be glorious in and of itself. But more than likely, oh man, I think the closer that we get to that drop dead date, no pun intended, in um, November of 2024, the likelihood of Joe Biden get replaced with somebody is seeming to be more and more likely. Could it be Hillary Clinton? I just talked about her somewhat recently, and she's just as much of a medical mishap waiting to happen and then also manifesting. So, yeah, it looked likely maybe maybe between a couple of years ago, but now probably not so much so. Well, if we start to see her do a more campaign-style interviews... She could be throwing her hat in there. She, we know that she is narcissistic enough and she desires that White House more than anybody else. Somebody who wants power that bad should never be even close to it. But, you know, Hillary Clinton does kind of run the DNC or at least a large portion of it. And like I said before, Gavin Newsom, like that guy's really positioning himself. I think if anybody replaces Joe Biden, it's going to highly likely be Gavin Newsom, or he's just going to wait until 2028. And hopefully Vivek Ramaswamy has got his feet underneath of him because he's going to be the only other guy who can be as charismatic and can refute Gavin Newsom's talking points on the stage. Because if for some reason Ron DeSantis rehabilitates his political career, that is currently a smoldering disaster. He's not going to look good on that debate stage. I'm waiting for that one-on-one -on -one heads up debate between Newsom and DeSantis to really go. Yeah, he's running in 2024 or he's probably just going to wait until 2028 and just, you know, try to say that, all oh, right, uh, that Donald Trump's second term was such a disaster and do his own electioneering off of that because we know he's calculating enough to read the wins better than just about anybody else that's on the bench. Less, of course... You know, the DNC just desire, or decides to pull their trump card to have a black woman run on top of the ballot and God damn it, man, she would fucking win. You know it as much as I do. Everybody loves Michelle Obama. Unless you take a look and realize that, well, Michelle Obama is just as incompetent, just as unqualified as her, uh, not unqualified, inexperienced as her husband. And bro, I think, yeah, it would definitely be revolutionary to have the second African-American uh, in the White House. I think it would be more apropos, or yeah, apropos positioning to have Barack riding bitch this time around. So yeah, could it happen? Michelle Obama could be America's next president, or president, forget Sleepy Joe. It's funny that the Telegraph is even referring to him as Sleepy Joe. The Democrats might look again to former first lady in 2024. And yeah, man, they've been talking about this and, you know, we've just kind of been in the back of everybody's mind for a while because, well, she put out that memoir that for whatever reason continues to be right at the top of the charts. And, you know, she checks the right boxes, even though she might not have one. And she would just be, she would be a runaway success on the Democrat side. Have they eroded too much of their support where it would just be an immediate success for her? Time will tell, I suppose, but... I think that she would be she would be a slam dunk if she wanted to run in 2024. I think that she would win. Not because, you know, I wouldn't support I wouldn't support Trump and you know everybody that would vote for Trump would vote her yeah would support him, but identity politics is still 
ruling the day, like it or not. That is still the highest level of social cachet, and there's enough dumb people that'll just go, well, Trump was just kind of the cause of all of this stuff, and, you know, I was just really tired of all of this, and if we just, I like that, you know, things were better under the Obama administration, you fucking idiots. If you actually believe that, you had no idea what was going on at the time, but there would be people dumb enough to just go ahead and line up for that. So, yeah, she could easily win. She could easily win. A source says that the conversation with a former politician, uh, how many qualifiers do you need on that one, Telegraph? It emerged that the government assumes Joe Biden will not be the Democratic nominee in 2024. And Joe will pull out before the first par- er, primary as it will be too late for the grassroots candidate to enter the fray and establishment stooge will be crowned at the convention. And that name of that lucky winner, Michelle Obama. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, potentially, because we're starting to see some hallmarks. Nothing quite as strong as Gavin Newsom, or even as long drawn out as Hillary Clinton, but there are some hallmarks that are out there, and we'll get to those shortly. It's a wild scenario, but if it does happen, please remember that you read it here first. No, man, everybody's been talking about this in other circles. This is why, you know, whenever you hear idiots say that, oh, you just live in an echo chamber, it's just all fucking leftists, man, because when you're on the right, when you're a conservative, actual conservative, not just a warmonger cat or masquerading is going, we need to return to traditional value. Shut your fucking mouth. You've been thinking about this shit in the back of your mind for a long time. This anecdote confirms what I've heard from other UK sources too. When governments engage with Biden, they feel like they are dealing with the face of an administration, but does not, oh, but not always the person in charge. Yeah, we've known about this during his campaign, even back in 2019. Like, wow, Joe's kind of deteriorating in front of our eyes. And you're more than likely, he's just going to be a figurehead. So again, like this guy's thinking that he's out here fucking recreating the wheel. And hey, look at I found this new thing that you can do in order to light a place, you know, a little bit more, a uh, little quicker, but you don't get too close to it because it's awfully hot. And, you know, you can also do that, too, if you rub two sticks together. Like This guy's a complete fucking disconnected ass. Uh, were the Democrats to drop him from the presidential ticket, the world would understand. Yeah, if the race is tied, which is too close for comfort, Biden is unpopular. He is aging before our very eyes. The latest gaffe, he called out the Grand Canyon, one of the nine wonders of the world. No, no, no. He's just a big fan of Andre the Giant. Uh, built, uh, if you know your history, uh, by the yeah Phoenicians. Doubts about his capabilities are enhanced by his grim alternatives should he expire in office. Yeah, exactly. The charmless Kamala Harris, which was hey man you know shout out to joe biden or whoever are his handlers around there just knowing that you know if you actually wanted to go against one of the most corrupt politicians in history verifiably so in joe biden to impeach him the option you know the nuclear option right behind him is so much worse so if that was one of his last really great political maneuvers and anointing kamala harris as the vice president who will do absolutely nothing but cackle about all of her accomplishments you know, man, good on him. If that's what he used his last of his brain power for, it sure as fuck wasn't being a good father or grandfather. But yes, is one of those deeply average people. She's not average. She's well below average. Unless we're talking about a certain set of skills that she's cultivated in order to make her a very dangerous individual in the political realms. Unaware that her limited knowledge isn't the sum of human understanding. You know, pot calling kettle black with this article. And it talks to everybody as if they're simpletons. You know, Russia's a big country and Ukraine's a small country. <laughs> Our latest pearl was to inform an audience that community banks are in the community. Oh, thanks. A revelation to those who thought that they were in the Grand Canyon. Yes, exactly. Uh, We face a rematch between two unpopular nominees, which is just not true. As much as mass media wants to tell you, Trump is very popular with the people that are going to vote for him. I don't know Biden supporters. Legitimately don't. I see people who uh, regrettably just vote Democratic or Democrat no matter what, vote blue no matter who. But the people who like Trump, fucking rock with Trump. Why do you think he's so far ahead of everybody else in the Republican Party? Why do you think when you see those head-to-head understandings of polls that, you know what, hey, if Trump dropped off the ballot, okay, would you go out there and support or support anybody else? The drop-off... You know, if you flip that with just, I don't know, like, is Ron DeSantis in second place still? Okay, if Ron DeSantis is the nominee, would you support him? Would you support any other Republican that isn't Donald Trump? The drop-off between the two categories is immense. Trump is fucking popular among his base. Biden 
is just there as a conduit for the Democratic Party. That's the difference. That's why Joe Biden's popularity has never been there at all whatsoever. I don't even think that it's crested 45%. Like right now it's scraping the bottom of the 40s. Like this dude is wildly unpopular and it's, well, it's very easy to understand, which is what nobody really wants. No, 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 I wanna see it. I wanna see it so goddamn bad, just mostly for the lulls. Hey man, we're in a late stage empire shit. So let's just go ahead and fucking laugh while you know Rome is burning. Uh, so why not ask force one of them to retire because you can't and Trump's not going to because, you know, they don't quite build everybody in the late 70s, early 80s the same way because Trump, yeah, he's 77. And by the time that he can take the oath for his second term, he'll be what, you know, right on the doorstep of 80 as well. And unless he has a steep drop off in mental capacity. He'll be totally fine. I'm not wishing for that at all whatsoever. But Joe Biden, if he's just going to continue on this path, like we've, yeah, like it was pointed out, we've seen him deteriorate in front of our very eyes very, very quickly. So, yeah, I think that there's a man. I don't think that it's a large. I think there's like a 40 percent chance. I don't think that it's more likely than not that there's going to be a replacement. I still think it's going to be Biden Trump, too. I think everybody loves a good rematch, right? I still think that that's the most likely position, but as those polls continue to come out that have Trump, you know, there's multiple polls now that have Trump ahead of Biden in a general election by 10 points. You know, the DNC might just be on uh, knocking at that door going, Joe, thank you, but you're out. We, we can't associate with you anymore. So we, we know about Gavin Newsom, but what about Michelle? Okay, so Barack got accosted or he got confronted and we know how much he likes the actual regular people. He just kind of dismissed them, you know, brushed them off because of course there's no, there's no campaign contributions at stake here. These were just the little people and Barack Obama is such a fucking elitist. Uh, stay silent when asked if wife Michelle is running for president amid rumors. So this happened right at the beginning of October. Uh, Barack stayed silent when he was asked whether his wife Michelle uh, might make a bid for the White House amid swirling rumors as he was spotted leaving Beverly Hills restaurant. Uh, the photographs exclusively obtained by the mail, uh, the 72 year old former president was seen surrounded by security guards after enjoying a meal at Funky on I, I don't know, Funky, Funk, I, I don't eat at these shitty places, fuck off uh, South Santa Monica Boulevard yes, because he's a fucking elitist guys, he's not a man of the people oh, it's just so good to have somebody who just understands the struggle, he's a fucking elitist man, like come on, he went to what, Harvard, you know, he Grew up in all the big socialist circles. Like, come on. Uh, Brock, who was dressed in a slick black blazer, open collar shirt, gray trousers, is outing is like, who the fuck? What, what is this fucking, you know, fashion review shit? Meanwhile, Big Mike, 59, is vacationing aboard Steven Spielberg's yacht near Port Fino in the Italian Riviera with Tom Hanks, his wife, Rita Wilson, and Spielberg's spouse, Kate Capshaw. Yeah, that's, um... That's why, okay, because Brock didn't say anything. It's like, hey, is Michelle running? Okay, but what is she out there doing? Tacitly campaigning and doing uh, laying the groundwork for some fundraising efforts. Uh, no direction needed. Michelle Obama drives herself on the deck, yeah, making sure that you know. Hey, man, if you don't do you know proper preparation, if your balls stick to your leg, you just yeah, man, you need to make sure you get all that moisture on uh, Steven Spielberg's two hundred fifty million dollar mega yacht off the goes to Port Fino on vacation with Tom Hanks, uh, Rita Wilson. Well, her husband, Barack, chills in California. Another day, another dip for Michelle Big Mike as uh, she soaks up the Mediterranean sun on Steven Spielberg's new yacht with Tom Hanks, 67, and his wife, Rita, 66. Now, why is that all so important? Well, we kind of know. And if you don't know, yo, uh, Steven Spielberg, like he basically pulls all the, he's, he's the Hillary Clinton of Hollywood. Okay. Where whatever Steven Spielberg says, that's the way that is the direction of Hollywood. He is the kingmaker. Why do you think Rachel Ziegler came out of absolute obscurity to get several high profile positions? What was her first gig? All right. West side story. Who was the director behind that? Yeah, exactly. See, and he's the one who anointed JJ Abrams. That's the motherfucker who couldn't make a movie to save his goddamn life and get tapped by Steven Spielberg as a successor. And the motherfucker ruined the most cinematic franchise right into the fucking ground. We did have help. But yo, why did he get all those opportunities? Because Steven Spielberg 
is that dude behind the scenes. And also, why is that so important? Because you know the incestuous, the incestuous relationship between the DNC and Hollywood. See where all the connections start to line up. Former First Lady, 59. Well, that's a big rough 59. Or, oh no, I'm sorry, that was her football number. Is playing Gooseberry among the power couples of Hollywood as husband Barack remains home in California. I make sure that, you know, all the laundry gets done and the cleaning's done appropriately. Well, she gets off, pause, on... The serious business of relaxing. Yeah, I don't think that it's just rela her relaxing. The acclaimed movie director picked up the $250 million super yacht this summer from the Dutch outfitter has been putting it through the paces off the Italian coast uh, with his wife, Kate Capshaw. The 357-foot boat. Yeah, I don't really care about the you know yacht itself. All I think is that it's a very conspicuous that she's down there palling around with those folks when the Obamas were just the... They were the relatable family that was in the White House, right? But yeah, I can continue to show you pictures and then just uh, her completely confuse you it's like wow those are awfully weird dimensions for a woman but long story short michelle obama's positioning herself for something is she gonna try to get into hollywood is she gonna try to make it big in the entertainment industry well hell he had everybody else hoodwinked over the uh, between the uh years of 2008 and 2016 so yeah why not okay you went from one hollywood location might as well go off to another or or is she trying to get in deep with the people that are already in deep with gavin newsom hoping to subvert him because there are two big factions within the democratic party themselves okay in case you didn't know and if she can go in or go ahead and uh, work that divisive magic just like her husband she could very easily position herself on that debate stage opposite trump who would absolutely dog walk her but then at the same time you know punching down for a strong independent black woman it would just be such a such an easy victory man every option for the dnc uh, opposite the most obvious one have a high likelihood of victory so paying attention to this sh uh, stuff right in its early days of gestation it's pretty goddamn important. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.